it's been a very long time since we've done any sort of tips and tricks video within Call of Duty World War II, even though I end every single video saying, if you enjoy this and updates, news, tips, tricks, information, all that good stuff, we don't really talk about tips all that much, but I figured, you know what, let's change that for today. Because as you guys know, we are getting very, very close to the end of Liberty Strike. It ends on Tuesday, and so therefore we don't have much time to actually take advantage of everything else on deck. So I figured we'd break out of the mode a little bit and give you guys a few tips here to end out the Liberty Strike event with a bang, and really maybe even help you go into next event with a little bit stocked up, or whatever may be dropping at that point, whenever that may be. So I figured I'd give you four tips here that I would really recommend doing here over this weekend so that you can end up taking full advantage of everything we still have in Liberty Strike, but also getting ready for the next. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. First things first, let's talk about collections because as with every single event, we can end up getting items in the collections afterwards out of regular supply drops if the RNG luck is on our side. We can never actually get, even if we complete those collections, the final tier rewards for those. So with that said, if you guys are interested in anything relating to the Liberty Strike collections, now's the time to unlock them if you haven't done so already. Whether it be that checked out ZK383 variants or you want the Forefather special helmet, whatever it is that you want out of these four collections for Liberty Strike, now is the time to break into it. So I want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on probably the easiest way to do this, but it is going to rely on you having taken part in and at least gotten a couple of the Liberty Strike bribes from the daily orders for completing 30 matches at some point during the last three weeks. That said, the usefulness of this is really dictated by how many that you have saved up. I think by the the time of this going live, I probably had about seven saved up. So an average of completing one every three days, I'd say that might be a little bit average. I know there are people that definitely have more and I know there are people that have less, but the best way to do this is to save those bribes until the very end of what you want to get. When you go in and take a look at the collections within Liberty Strike, you'll see that there are a lot of different items that are of a very small quantity in terms of the cost for armory credits. There's a bunch of things that are 125 armory credits. There's a bunch of things that are 800 150, and then there are some that will be in the lower 2000s. Those are the stuff that, again, you'll see probably the most expendable and things that you can end up buying, but there are also a lot of items that are 8,900 armory credits. Now, assuming you don't really care too much about the different uniforms for a specific division, that's really going to be a deal breaker on if you really want to get, say, the checked out variant, which has two 8,900 armory credit barriers before you unlock the ZK variant. So, the best way to do this and and to unlock any of these things within any of the collections is to go in by the lowest denomination for armory credits, so the 125, the 850, and get as many of those as possible out of the way up until maybe say you do get to those 2000 armory credit costs. From there, it really comes down to how many different Liberty Strike bribes you have and how many you're willing to use to risk or if not guarantee, you end up getting one of those larger ticket items. That's just playing into the way the bribes work because they guarantee you one dupe protected item. So so if you end up knocking out the lowest of those, the things that cost you the least, then you'll only have available for those bribes to select that are not duplicates the higher tier items. So in that sense, you should end up saving a ton of armory credits that way, and hopefully it really does help out if you want to end up going in and getting every single item for Liberty Strike. But that said, that's that little first tip out of the way. The second one I want to move on to deals a little bit with a community challenge, because we've talked about this now since the beginning of Liberty Strike, and it's been something that's been on my mind, and I really want to complete it because I'm a huge fan of that M1 Independent 2 variant. You guys might not care so much, but I know there's got to be somebody out there that loves it as much as me. But regardless, that's that end final goal for this community challenge within Liberty Strike. Personally, I'm still flying solo and blind. I have no idea where exactly we are at at this point because my news page still has Welcome Back Soldier. It doesn't have anything in relation to the event specific items or anything in relation to the community challenge itself to track that. So, so by the time you guys watch this, we may be farther than when I'm recording this, which is a couple of days earlier, more than likely, as I'm prepping for a trip that I'll be on over the weekend and the next upcoming week and a half or so. But when we looked at this last time, when we did a dedicated video on talking, if we would complete it, we were slightly under par. 
However, we've made some improvements, we've made some benchmarks that really do kind of put us right on the edge of either making it last second or not making it at all. That's assuming we don't get any artificial help from Sledgehammer, but the best way that we can do this as a community is grind out all weekend long infected. That is the best idea here that you guys can have. And realistically, if my voice were to be something that carries and amplifies tenfold, I would love to see as much of the community as possible playing infected because that would expedite the process so fast. We've already talked about it in the sense that you end up having the ability to complete maybe three matches or so of Infected in the time that it takes to complete, say, one domination match. Between halves, loading screens, and then the end game and all that, playing it out probably takes about the amount of time as three Infected matches. So when everything is based on match completions and match wins, of course, you want to go for the thing that you can get the most of. So Infected, definitely grind that out if you guys have the opportunity to jump on your consoles or on PC and play this weekend. It's definitely the best way to do this. Next little tip up on deck here is one that honestly I ended up finding over on Reddit and it was super helpful. So shout out to Cute Baby Penguin. This one is talking about how to complete one of this week's weekly challenges, but honestly in some of the shortest time possible. I mentioned it in the video talking about week three of content with Liberty Strike, how I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the weekly orders because they really had to make you use Cavalry Division. And since the division launched, it was something that was fun at the beginning, but I've kind of moved on to play with my normal divisions outside of that once again and so therefore if I want to go back to it, it'll be for fun not really just being pushed in that way by an order but in that mentality of not really wanting to spend all that much time in Calvary the best way to do this is by simply using Cavalry Division, playing Shipment 1944, using Ordnance, as well as then Molotovs, Recons, and Counter Recon Planes. Because you'll end up getting these incredibly fast, you don't even have to stay alive for all that long, and if it's a domination game or something, you can capture flags too to help make that happen even faster, and then in that sense, you should be able to breeze through all of this in maybe say one domination game. Assuming you can string together three, four kills, maybe cap a flag and a kill or two, you should be able to get all of these out of the way in one game 30 score streaks so that's something that right up front it kind of sounds crazy like there's no way that could even happen but it is something that is quite possible or at least to get it very close to maybe at the most you end up having to spend three games or so but it's something that definitely will help out tremendously and if you're like me that don't really want to spend too much time on it or just get one of these orders out of the way very quickly so you can move on to some of the other things that's one way to absolutely blow this order out of the water so huge shout out to cute baby penguin once again on Reddit, that was a brilliant idea, and honestly, just wanted to share it with you guys, because I found it super helpful, I found it awesome, and so therefore, just figured you guys could use it as well. But the fourth and final thing is kind of some future-proofing here, getting you ready for what may be next on the horizon of content within Call of Duty World War II. When the next event might be, we don't know at the moment, but we're going to have an event relatively soon. The most we ever see downtime for an event between each of them is, I believe, the max we've seen so far, three weeks. Usually it's about two weeks. We've seen that Liberty Strike from Attack of the Undead was only one week, so who knows when it's gonna be, but it will be sometime soon here after the event ends in a couple of days. But that is something that I wanna bring your attention to, how you can stock up and get ready for the next weapon drop and content drop here. That, the biggest thing being armory credits. Now, I'm not a huge fan of actually putting money into the system, paying for COD points. I haven't done that in World War II and I don't plan on doing it. So in that sense, everything that I get is either at of supply drops that I've organically saved from contracts and orders, or it's something that I just use armory credits to buy them outright. To which gaining armory credits can be a little bit of a pain sometime, but I wanna bring your attention to the best and easiest ways to do this and grind out a bunch in a relatively short period of time. So the first and biggest one is just simply your mail stations. But one thing that not many people really know about this is that you can end up getting a drop of armory credits from it to mail stations. That might sound weird if you're only a multiplayer person, you don't dabble anywhere else in the game, because there's only one mail station in the headquarters or on your quick menu UI. But if you end up going over to the zombies portion, you can end up going to the mail station in the supplies tab over there as well, to which you can end up getting 200 armory credits there. And so if you're somebody that isn't Master Prestige, you'll end up getting every four hours 400 armory credits. But if you are Master Prestige, it's 500 armory credits because of that little bonus that Master Prestiges get every four hours. And so therefore that starts to really add up. And over time, you start to get a lot. On that method, if you stick to it, 
you can end up getting 3,000 armory credits every single day. And so therefore, on the week, that's a 21,000 increase to your armory credits just organically like that, not even going into any other scenario that we're going to talk about here at this also. So if you are somebody that likes to collect your mail station armory credits, make sure you go also to the multiplayer and zombies, not just one or the other, because it'll definitely help you out in the long run. The second part of this deals a little bit with these zombies challenges. These are usually easy and fast. Even if you're not a huge zombies fan, this is something that will really help you out in terms of getting more armory credits in your bank because the zombies orders usually have a little bit more compared to what we end up seeing in Major Howard's in terms of armory credit orders there. So in that sense, if you have the time to sit down, play a few matches of zombies and grind out some challenges, you'll definitely be rewarded with a few extra hundred armory credits per day. So that's always something very nice as well. And the final one, once again, we already kind of talked about it, is simply just coming down to the orders. Right now in Liberty Strike, we don't really have all that many. It's on a sort of rotation where we have a supply drop, some double XP, and then also armory credits. So it's kind of hit or miss on the day whenever you do it, but we will still at least have one daily order that does have armory credits every so often, but there are days that does not actually have any. So you'll have to get a little lucky if you log in and find one, but make sure you end up doing that so you can capitalize on those 300 armory credits as well. But if you do all that kind of stuff, you should end up seeing in a week total right around again, 20 to maybe even like 30,000 armory credits on that quick turnaround. So while you might have some saved up or maybe don't have some saved up, you can still put a lot into your bank of armory credits just by doing these simple things to get ready for the next event within World War II. But I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. Hopefully you guys found this insightful. I wanted to offer some cool insight into some maybe workarounds that you might not necessarily think about just while playing the game. I wanted to try and think a little outside the box here with some of this stuff. So hopefully has helped and hopefully it can help out in terms of not only completing some stuff you're looking forward to doing in Liberty Strike, but also going forward and getting ready for future events. That said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you guys like these tips? Do you think that we should add anything to it? And if you guys have anything to contribute, feel free to. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II content, information, best class setups, tips and tricks, updates, information, all that good stuff. We got you covered here up on the channel, but if you are new, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding any of that. Of course, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube, Practical Live on Twitter, so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And also, finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram as well, get a little more active over there, so that link is also down there if you guys to check out, if you guys are willing. But all that said and out of the way, thank you all so much for watching, might as well Espresso, I'll see you guys later, hope you guys have a fantastic day, take care, and peace.